What's up guys? My name is Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. Every month here on my channel, we talk about my family's annual financial goals and see how we're doing for the year month by month. So this is the month we actually kind of got back on track after falling a little bit behind. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, if you like this spreadsheet, it's available in my Etsy shop, which is linked in the video description. It's actually on sale. My whole Etsy shop is on sale, all my spreadsheets and printables for the month of April with the code April 2023. So we are taking a look at our annual financial goals. We just closed out March, which is 25% of the way through the year. So let's take a look and see what we we're able to do in March. So for gross pay, we brought in $15,433. That did include a tax refund, actually two tax refunds, a state and federal refund that we received in March. So that's why it's a little bit of a higher income month, which was really exciting because I thought we were going to owe taxes, but we actually, well, it's good and bad. We ended up making less last year than we thought we were going to. So we withheld a little too much. So we ended up getting a refund. So I'm glad that we were able to get that refund. We didn't owe and we were able to put that money to some financial goals this month. So for the year, we're at $41,739 in income and our goal is 175,000. So we are at 24% of the way to our goal. And like I mentioned, we are 25% of the way through the year. So we are basically there for where we need to be at this point in the year. And that is exciting to see because this 175,000 is kind of a stretch goal for us. And so knowing that we're doing well, closing out the first quarter of the year feels really good. Next, we've got investing. So we are investing in a few different things this year. First is my husband's 401k. So we are investing enough to get the employer match plus a little bit. So we're investing $300 per paycheck for my husband's 401k that comes out automatically. So we can't mess that up, which I really like about 401k contributions. I don't have to do anything. It's very passive. Just yesterday, actually, on my Instagram stories, I did a QA and a um, and my Instagram is linked in the video description if you're not following me and you want to. But yeah, I did a QA. and do one every month and somebody asks, like, what's one thing you're looking forward to when you're debt free? And one of the things I am looking forward to is trying to automate our finances a little bit more just with debt payoff. Every extra dollar that comes in, I'm throwing it towards debt. But once we're debt free and investing is our main financial goal, I really hope to be able to to automate it more and just have things automatically go and I don't have to make manual transfers. So yeah, I really like the 401k because that's automated and maybe we can figure out a way to do that. As you can see with our income, it does fluctuate pretty significantly month to month. And so it's kind of hard to automate things when you have fluctuating income. But once we get there, maybe we'll think of some creative ways to make that happen so I can spend less time focused on making transfers and more time just enjoying life. So just to circle back, we contributed $600 to my husband's 401k in March, which puts us at year to date at 1800 on a goal of 7800. So we are 23% of the way there. It's a little bit behind because there's two months in the year where my husband gets three paychecks. And so those months will catch it up. If we don't change the auto automatic contribution on 401k for the year, we will hit that 7,800. So we are on track for that. Stock options, we didn't do anything this month, but we are planning in April to start working on that goal because we were able in March to max out my 2022 Roth IRA, which is really exciting. So we took basically that whole tax refund that we received this month and contributed to my 2022 Roth IRA and maxed it out. So $2,475. And so that is super exciting because I did not think we were going to be able to do that before tax day. There's like another week till tax day at the time I'm filming this, but we made it with extra time. So that was really cool. And now we are pausing my Roth IRA contributions while we move on to this goal of stock options. And then we'll circle back to it once the stock options are exercised, probably in a couple months and work on funding my 2023 Roth. So now we have like a full year to fund my 2023 Roth, which is great. So year to date for my investing, we are definitely on track. We're ahead of schedule now because of that big contribution in March. So we contributed $3,150 year to date on a goal of 7,800. So so my husband and I both have a goal of 7,800 this year, and I'm actually 40% of the way there after this month. So that is awesome. So this month we broke $3,000 for investing $3,075. And it's really great to see like multiple thousands going in 
And I just really look forward to when we're debt free and we can do that on a regular basis. So we are at just under $5,000 year to date for investing $4,950 and our goal is $20,000. So we are right on track, which is great. 25% of the way there for our goal when we are 25% of the way through the year. Feeling really good about that. We have an expensive month coming up and crazy stuff going on with our finances in April and May because we are in the process of selling our house and moving to an apartment. So there's going to be a lot going on and we'll see how all this affects that. So let's actually talk next about debt. So we've been on a debt-free journey for almost three and a half years now and we are paying off our last debt, which is my husband's student loan, which has a balance of about 70, I think it's 72, $73,000. And so in March, we paid $1,090 towards that debt. So year to date, we're at $36,90 and our goal is $20,000. So we are a little bit behind here, but Again, we're selling our house and we're definitely going to put some of the proceeds from that sale to debt. We just are deciding how much and I've been making some videos about that and talking about it in different videos and I'll continue to talk about it until we make a decision. We're really thinking carefully and weighing all the pros and cons on what to do with that money. And so I think there's like no bad answers, whether we use the money to pay off the student loan or we put it in high yield savings and sit on it for a while. I think both of those are good options. I don't think there's a bad option. I think I'll feel good about both of them, but we're just trying to you know, make the best decision based on all the information we have. And you guys know I like to really thoroughly think through these decisions and spend a lot of time working through them. So I make the right one because there was so long in my life, I think that I didn't spend enough time being careful about my financial decisions that now I may be swing too far in the other direction, but I'd rather be that way than just like make a quick decision and not have thought it through. So more to come on that. Stay tuned. It is three weeks, less than three weeks till we move. So we've got a lot going on here. All right. Expenses for this month. We had $8,782 of expenses. This excludes taxes, but it does include like health insurance and any other paycheck deductions and just our sinking funds, everything else besides what we put to investing debt or taxes this month. So it is pretty high. I shared with you guys in a recent video in my budget recap for March that we had to pay $800 for utilities in March. So yeah, you can see our expenses are pretty high for March, but there were some expensive things that went on this month. So we did put $2,486 to taxes. And so total expenses were $11,268. For expenses, we have a goal of keeping under $97,000. So we're 24% of the way there and we're 24% of the way to our income goal. So that's right on track. And then for taxes, we are 25% of the way there. So again, right on track where we should be. All the numbers are lining up and making me feel really happy about where we're at. The only number that's behind is this debt number, but everything else looks really great. So I'm feeling really good about how this year is starting off. I'm hoping we can stay on track. Last year was a lot more bumpy. It was my first full year being self-employed. It was my first full year not working for an employer and yeah it just we had a baby it was just a really it was a hard year it really was and this year is just going a lot smoother I'm sleeping at night a lot more and so everything feels better when you're sleeping and you're able to give more attention to the things you want to pay attention to because when you're not getting sleep it's hard to focus on anything all right so for March we put 27% of our money to investing and in debt which are our financial goals and our goal is to put 20 to 25% or more if we can, but at least 20 to 25% of our gross pay to financial goals. And so we were able to do that this month for the first time this year, 27% went towards financial goals. So year to date, when you average out the last three months, we are at 21%. So we're in that 20 to 25% range, which is great. And then for expenses, we only put 73% of our income to expenses this month. And so year to date, we're at 79. So we're also in that 75 to 80% or less range. Yeah, I mean, it's right at the edge of that range. So we definitely want to stay in there if we can. But man, life is expensive right now. And you know, we I was just talking to my husband the other day, like we've made some choices that make life more expensive. Like we chose to put our daughter in preschool and she doesn't need to go 
we but we do it because it does give me some time to work and also it's good for her to experience being at school before kindergarten starts and so like that is an expense that we're paying out of pocket that we don't have to that's a choice we've made so if we didn't make that choice we would have more to put towards financial goals but these are things that we've chosen to do and I feel like just when you have young kids and I've heard this from a lot of like the financial voices that I listen to I don't know if you guys have heard of the money guy show but they talk about this a lot like when you have young kids it's a really expensive time and don't worry it's not going to be that way forever so I'm trying to keep that in mind that we need to be disciplined, we need to be focused, but also we're not gonna have to pay for daycare costs forever. So I am looking forward to that. We're actually gonna get a break from daycare towards the second half of next year when my daughter starts kindergarten. And so we'll have a little more money and hopefully we'll just keep increasing our income and keep this ball moving forward in a positive direction. But I mean, I just feel so grateful that I'm even at this place where we're meeting these goals, where our income's good, where we're putting money to debt every single month, putting money to investing every single month because just a few short years ago like four years ago we were not putting anything towards retirement or like minimal like fifty two hundred dollars a month and our debt was going up every single month so the turnaround we've made like I need to keep that in mind if we have a slow month or a good month or whatever like we have made such a turnaround and it just as long as we're consistent we'll keep moving in the right direction and it's just a matter of you know Will we get to our retirement number in our 40s or 50s or 60s? Not like, are we going to be able to retire at all? So I just feel really, really, really content about where we're at with our finances. and excited to see what we can do as we head towards 40. My husband turned 36 a couple months ago and I am turning 36 this month. So we've got another four years till 40, which is crazy. Like anybody else in their mid 30s, like... It kind of in denial that like 40s around the corner because I am but anyway I think 40s are gonna be great I think the financial place that we're gonna be in at 40 compared to 30 is gonna be incredible and I'm just really excited and I love bringing you guys along for the journey so as long as you guys watch my videos I will keep making them and show you what we're up to so that is it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you want to see more like this, then hit that subscribe button. And if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. As I mentioned, if you like this spreadsheet, you can get it in my Etsy shop. You can get it individually or in a bundle with my budget spreadsheet and my debt payoff spreadsheet. And because my shop is on sale, if you use the promo code April 2023 for 20% off and you buy the bundle, it's like getting three spreadsheets for the price of two. So yeah, because the bundle's discounted and then you, you stack the savings with the 20% off, you basically get a free spreadsheet. So check it out in the video description if you're interested and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.